Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to draw this minimalist swimming pool scene in Procreate. I'll be teaching you lots of tips and tricks about working in Procreate, including using Quick Shape, the different transformation modes, alpha lock, clipping masks, blend modes, and how pattern brushes can speed up your workflow. This illustration is inspired by my excitement that the Barbie movie is coming out. I cannot wait to go see it. And I thought this little swimming pool was a little bit like the one that Barbie has in her dream house. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using brushes from my basic toolkit and Imperfect Patterns brush set for Procreate. You can find these at bardobrush.com. And if you're new to Procreate, I recommend watching my Procreate for Beginners tutorial to get you familiar with the basics. Let's get started. Let's start by creating a new canvas. I'm gonna tap the plus sign in the upper right corner and the canvas size I'm going to be using today is 2800 by 3500 pixels. I have a canvas template saved for that so I'm just gonna go ahead and tap it. Now we're gonna start out by drawing our pool shape and it's gonna be kind of like a kidney shape. So I think it's a little bit easier to start with some basic shapes before trying to draw a more complex shape. So I'm gonna go into my brushes and I'm just gonna pop into my pencil box and grab my sketching pencil. You can use whatever sketching pencil you want. We're not doing a lot of sketching today. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just use black. And I'm gonna start by drawing a big circle like that. And then off to the side, a smaller circle, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of using this as a guide. And then I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And now I'm gonna go over to my layers and I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this layer. So I'll tap the little N and move the opacity down. Then I'll tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And before I start drawing anything, I'm actually gonna go ahead and set my background color. So I'm gonna tap down here where it says background color. And I wanna choose a nice kind of like blush pink for the background, something like that, nice and light. And now I'm gonna go into my brushes and I'm gonna go into my basic toolkit and the brush that I'm gonna use is my smooth mono line brush. And then for my colors, I'm going to choose white. So I'll double tap close to white and that will snap to a pure white value. And my brush size right now is 73%. Now I'm gonna start right here and I'm going to draw first the like little kidney bean part. And then when I go around to the other side, I'm gonna make that part like a big curve. And it's okay if they don't line up perfectly right here because I'm actually gonna end up having that be cropped off in a minute. But um, overall, I think this is a pretty good shape. You can always adjust your pool shape if you want by going into the liquify tool. You just tap the little adjustments menu, which is the magic wand and tap liquify. And using the push adjustment and maybe a bigger brush size, you can kind of push that into a more ideal shape, something like that. There we go. Maybe you want that to come in a little bit more. Good, I think that looks great. So now, like I said, I'm gonna have part of my pool cropped off. I think that will compositionally look a little bit better. So I'm gonna tap my transform tool and I'm just going to kind of rearrange this. I'm gonna turn it a little bit and I'm gonna have it take up most of my canvas and leaving a little bit of room right here for a, an umbrella and some chairs and things like that. but. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm done with my sketch, so I can go into my layers and I could just uncheck the little box that's on the layer with the sketch and that's gone too. All right, now let's color in our pool. So I'm gonna add a new layer, just tap the little plus sign and then drag that layer underneath our kind of pool edge shape. And now I'm gonna go into my colors and I'm gonna choose a nice pool blue color, a nice bright saturated blue like that. And now I'm just gonna draw an outline within the white outline that I've already drawn, something like this. Make sure it's a fully closed shape. And then I can use color drop to fill that in like that. Now we're gonna make this blue shape look a little more like water and like it's actually a pool. So let's go up to our layers and we're gonna turn on alpha lock to add a little bit of shading to the shape. So to do that, you can take two fingers and swipe to the right on that layer, or you can tap the layer and choose alpha lock either way. And then for our colors, we're gonna go in and choose something that's a little darker and more saturated. So something like that. And then for the brushes, I'm gonna use the simple shader brush. This is like a very soft shader brush that has a little bit of texture. I really like it for this. And then let's do maybe like 25% for the brush size. 
And then I'm just gonna come in here and add a little bit of shading on one side of my pool. And this sort of represents kind of the edge of the pool. In our scene, we're imagining our light is coming from this direction. So all of our shadows are gonna go kind of that way. So that's perfect. Now we're gonna add some water texture to it. So we're gonna go up to our layers. We're gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And we're gonna use a clipping mask to make the texture that we're going to add uh, just be within the shape of this kind of like bean pool shape that we made. So we can tap that layer and choose clipping mask. And you'll see this little arrow. That means that it's a clipping mask. And now let's choose a new brush to do this. We're gonna go up to our brushes and I'm gonna actually go into my imperfect pattern set because I have the perfect brush for doing pool like water texture and it's called undulations. You can of course draw these little lines, you know, individually, but this kind of like makes it way faster. So I'm gonna choose undulations and then for my color, I'm just gonna start with a pure white. So for the brush size, let's do that at maybe like 35%. And then I'm just gonna, in one continuous pass, paint over the whole pool shape. And you'll see all those really awesome wavy lines. Super easy. Now I wanna have like, kind of like a grid of lines. So I'm actually just gonna turn my canvas 90 degrees and then do the same thing again. Just go over the whole shape in one continuous stroke. And now I have the perfect pool texture, like water, you know, all those like water reflection lines, but they're way too bright. So I'm gonna do a little adjusting. I'm gonna go to my layers. I'm gonna tap the little N here and I'm gonna set my blend mode to add. And then I'm gonna set my opacity down a little bit. So it's a little less intense. Because I did that add blend mode, it, it has like, see how it's like a really bright blue. So go ahead and set it to add and then set your opacity. Mine's at like 10%. And now let's um, add some details to the edge of our pool. So I'm gonna tap on the layer with the like white border and I'm gonna turn on alpha lock on this layer cause I'm gonna add some little like lines that represent tiles. So two fingers swipe to the right on that layer. And I think I'm gonna make this actually a little more, um, less white, a little more like creamy. So I'm gonna go into like my yellow oranges and just get like a very, very light cream. And I can drop that into the white and fill it in. So now it's a little less intense, you know, than it was when it was white. And now I'm gonna pick a color that's even darker, maybe a little more gray. So something like that, we're gonna draw some lines. For this, the brush that I'm gonna use is back in my basic toolkit and it's called Grainy Liner. I love this brush for doing line work. It has a lot of awesome texture. All right, so now I'm just gonna go around and draw some lines all the way around the edge of my pool edge. <laughs> and they don't have to be perfect or perfectly spaced. I think this part of it, since everything is kind of a little, you know, flat and perfect, these just gives it a little bit more character. There. So go around and add lines all the way around. Perfect. All right. And the last thing I want to do with this background is just add a little bit of texture to the like pink concrete or maybe whatever this would be. <laughs> just add a little bit of texture to that. So let's create a new layer and we're going to move this layer underneath all the other layers like that. You could delete this sketch layer if you want. You don't have to. Um, and then we're going to set the blend mode of this layer to multiply. So we're going to tap this little N and scroll up until we get to multiply. Multiply has an automatic darkening effect. So that's gonna speed up, you know, picking colors when it comes to adding this texture. And then all I want you to do is use your finger to do like an eyedropper select of the color that is the background color. So select the background color. And then for our brush, we're gonna choose the coarse shader brush that's in the basic toolkit. So this one has, uh, it's still soft edges, but it's got a lot more texture to it. And my brush size is 40, 50%. And then I'm just gonna go over the entire background like this so that it's all covered with that texture. So something like that. Now the texture looks a little intense, so we're gonna tone it down a little bit. We're gonna go to that layer that we just created uh, and we're going to just reduce the opacity of it. So we'll just tap the little um, M M for multiply, and then just reduce the opacity so it's just like a nice, very subtle texture, like that. Now let's add 
some details and some fun things to actually make this into a scene and not just a swimming pool. So first we're gonna add some little inner tubes to our pool. So let's create a layer above all the pool layers. We can tap the topmost layer and then tap the plus sign. And then for our color, we're gonna start with a pure white. And then for the brushes, we're gonna switch back to that smooth monoline brush. It's gonna be perfect for creating some perfect inner tube circle shapes. For my brush size, let's do about 68% is what I'm at. And now I'm gonna draw a circle shape. And we're gonna use the quick shape feature to create these perfect circles. So draw a circle and be sure to overlap the beginning just a little bit, and then hold your pencil down. And that's going to snap to a quick to a quick shape, which makes this oval. But if you put another finger on the screen, it's gonna to snap to a perfect circle. And you can move it to adjust how big you want your inner tube to be. You can also tap here after you let go. You can tap up here, it says circle, and you can continue to adjust it and move it around and get it to the size that you want. I think that looks pretty good right there. And now we're going to add some stripes to our inner tube. So we're gonna to go to our layers, turn on alpha lock on this layer because we're just gonna draw within the shape we already drew. So turn on alpha lock with the two fingers swipe to the right. And then I'm gonna start by doing some yellow stripes. So I'm gonna do like a nice bright yellow. And then for my brush, I'm going to switch to the inker brush. So go ahead and choose the inker brush. And then on this inner tube, we're just gonna draw some kind of like trapezoidal shapes on it. Oops, kind of like little wedges almost. So they all kind of like taper out like that. So something like that. And I think we should have a few little inner tubes on here. So we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate that. Go up to your layers, swipe to the left on that layer with the inner tube and choose duplicate. So now we have another one. We can go over to our transform tool, which is a little arrow here. And then we can move that, we'll put it over there like that. And then we could duplicate that again and move this one, maybe like down here close to that one. And I also think it would be nice to have some different colored inner tubes. So I'll start by selecting, let's see, that one is the bottom one. So I'll select the one that's here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna use the hue saturation brightness adjustment to change the color of that, really easy. Go up to the little adjustments menu, which is the magic wand and choose hue saturation brightness. And then we're just going to slide it until we get to a color that we want. I kind of want to do a, like a pink color. You can also adjust the brightness if you want to make it like a lighter color. Just don't go down on the brightness because that will turn the white into like a gray. So just go up only. And now let's change the color of this one too. So I'm going to find that one. Let's see, it's, I like to like turn it on and off so I can find which layer it's on. So I'll choose that layer. And then I'll go to hue, saturation, brightness in the adjustments menu. And let's see, maybe we'll do like a like a teal for that one, something like that, good. So we've got our three inner tubes. Now there's something we wanna do to really sell the effect that these are floating in a pool, and that's to create a shadow that would be like at the bottom of the pool. So I'll show you how to do that next. We're gonna go to our layers, and I'm just gonna merge all three of the inner tubes onto one layer, so you can actually just pinch them all together like this. So they're all on a single layer. And then we're gonna duplicate this layer, and that's gonna become our shadow. So we're gonna to swipe to the left and choose duplicate. Now we have two copies. We're gonna select the bottom copy and we're gonna offset it quite a bit. So we're going to go to our transform tool. And remember we said the light's coming from this way. So we're gonna offset them in that direction. I know it doesn't look like much right now. It just looks like there's way too many inner tubes here, but bear with me. We're gonna change the color of these and make them a shadow. So let's go back to our layers and we need to actually select the blue of the pool and we're gonna make these the same color. So we're gonna select kind of the same pool blue that we're using here. And since we already have alpha lock turned on on this layers, you can tell because there's like a checkerboard pattern there, we're just gonna fill it. So we're gonna tap the layer and choose fill. And because alpha lock is on, it's only gonna fill those shapes. 
Now, the other thing we want to do is set the blend mode of this layer to multiply because that's going to create the darkening effect that'll make it look like a shadow. So we're going to tap the little N here and we're going to slide up to multiply. There you go. And as you can see, it's creating like a shadow effect. If you wanted to make your shadows lighter or darker, you could always go to your hue saturation brightness adjustment and make them a little darker or brighter. Just depends on whatever color you had filled them with. It, you know, how dark or light they're going to be. So our little shadows are perfect circles right now, but if they were really in a real pool, they would be a little bit distorted. So we're going to use the liquify tool to distort these just a little bit. The first thing we have to do is turn off alpha lock because you can't use liquify if alpha lock is on. So you can take two fingers and swipe to the right again, make sure that checkerboard pattern is off and then go up to your adjustments menu and choose liquify. We're gonna be using the push feature, but we're gonna turn the distortion and the momentum sliders all the way up. And that's gonna provide a little bit of distortion as we push the pixels around. Um, let's reduce the size of the brush. I am at like 28% or so, yeah. Um, and now we're just going to go back and forth lightly over these kind of circle shapes, the inner tube shadows, and just distort them a little bit. You don't need a lot. If you distort them too much, they'll look really unnatural. So just kind of like going back and forth over the shapes, something like that. There we go. Okay. I think that looks good. All right, our pool is done. Our pool floats are done. Now we're gonna add one more thing to make this scene a little bit more complete. And that's a little umbrella with a couple beach chairs in this corner. So let's zoom on up into that corner and go into our layers. And we're gonna create a new layer above everything else. So select your top layer and then top the plus sign. And I'm gonna choose white for my color. And drawing circles is made really easy with a monoline brush. So I'm gonna go back to that smooth monoline brush. And we're gonna draw a perfect circle using quick shape. So go ahead and draw a circle, overlap the beginning a bit and hold, it, hold your pencil down. And then once it snaps, put a finger on your screen until, you, uh, until it becomes a perfect circle. And then you can tap circle up here if you wanna edit that again. You wanna leave, a, don't make your circle too big or too close to the edge of the pool. We wanna leave a little bit of room for our beach chairs. So something like that. And then when you're done, you can fill the rest of the circle with color. Let's add some colored sections to our umbrella using alpha lock. So we're gonna to go to our layers, swipe with two fingers to turn on alpha lock on that layer. And then for the color, I'm gonna to stick to that yellow and then I'm gonna stick with this brush, but I'm gonna decrease the brush size quite a bit. I'm at like, uh, maybe a little smaller than that. 6%, five or 6%. And now we're just going to create like eight sections of our umbrella. So we're just gonna divide it into eight sections. And you can draw this freehand or you can use quick shape again or quick line. Uh, draw a line and then keep your pencil on the screen and it will snap to a perfectly straight line and you can like put it exactly where you want. You can also tap edit line up here and move it around if you wanna be really precise about it. So we're gonna do divide it in half. That's where this line feature is really handy so you can get it pretty precise. So divide it in half and then in half again, making sure all the lines cross right in the middle. That one came out pretty good. I won't edit it and then I'll do this last section here. So every other section, we're gonna fill with color drop. So you can just grab color drop and fill in every other section like that. And now we have a cute little beach umbrella. Now our beach umbrella would be casting a shadow as well. We kind of want to think about that with everything we put in our scene. It's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a shadow created because we have the strong light source, which would be the sun in this case. So let's make a shadow for our umbrella. We're gonna, we're gonna duplicate it. Swipe to the left and choose duplicate. We're gonna choose that bottom layer. And we're gonna fill this with kind of like a creamy gray color for our shadow. So you can hang out here in the oranges and yellows and just choose like, kind of like a creamy grayish color. We can always adjust this if we need to. And then we're gonna tap 
the second, you know, it's the bottom layer, the bottom umbrella layer, tap that and choose fill layer. And since alpha lock was already on from when we did the little sections, uh, it should fill that shape with the gray color. And then for shadows, we're gonna set our blend mode to multiply. So tap the little N right here and choose multiply from the list. All right, so now we're gonna offset this at sort of the same angle that we've been offsetting our other shadows. So go up to your transform tool and then just drag it kind of this direction. I think right there where it like almost touches the edge of the pool. That's good, okay. Now we're just gonna add a couple little beach chairs to this scene. So let's create a layer that is below the umbrella layers. So I'll go ahead and tap the inner tube layer and then tap plus sign and that'll place the layer exactly where I need it. And to draw the beach chairs, we're just gonna use the selection tool to make some uh, rectangles. So we're gonna go to the selection tool and we're gonna switch over to rectangle mode. And I'm gonna just draw it doesn't matter really where it is right now. I'm just gonna draw it off to the side, a little rectangle shape that's about the shape of a one of those long lounge chairs that you see at the pool. And then I'm going to select white from my color picker circle and then fill that with white. And that's gonna become one of my chairs. So I'll deselect. I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm gonna duplicate this because I'm gonna have two chairs. So duplicate, swipe to the left and duplicate it and then use the transform tool to just move one off to the side like that. So we've got two little chairs next to each other, okay? And then in your layers, we'll just merge those together. So just pinch them together and you can merge them together. All right, so now we're gonna use the transform tool to put our beach chairs under the umbrella. So go to the transform tool and we're just gonna rotate them a bit, kind of tuck them underneath there. I'm actually gonna make them a bit smaller so we have like one is partially under the umbrella, the other one is completely under the umbrella, something like that. Now I have this problem here where the white of the umbrella is blending in with the white of my beach chair. So I can actually solve that just by rotating my umbrella a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to my layer with the umbrella, go to my transform tool, and then I'm gonna grab this green node here and just rotate it about right there. And when I do that, now I have enough contrast and those two things don't blend in with each other. So I just rotate it. So the yellow part is what overlaps the part that part of the chair. Okay, so let's add a little bit of detail to our chairs. We're gonna go to back to our chair layer and turn on alpha lock. So swipe to the right with two fingers. And for my brush, I'm gonna go back to that grainy liner brush that I used to do like the pool tile lines. And then I'm just gonna choose like a gray color. Doesn't have to be too dark. And I'm gonna draw some lines on my beach chairs, just kind of like that. And this one as well, only a couple because you can't really see it all. Oops. Okay. And then I wanna make this chair look like it's kind of like the back is sitting up a little bit. So I'm gonna use the transform tool to do that. I'm gonna go to my, so I'm gonna go to my selection tool. I'm gonna go back to freehand mode. And then I'm just gonna tap right here. And then I'm gonna tap on the other side. So I make like a straight line selection across. And then I'll just close my selection like that. Okay, so I've selected this part of my beach chair. And then I'm gonna go to the transform mode. And I'm actually gonna use the distort mode. So tap distort. And this is gonna be a lot easier if my bounding box is like in line with my you know, rectangle that I had selected. So you can grab this yellow node right here and you can change your bounding box there and you wanna align it so it's like pretty well aligned with the like rectangle that we had selected. And once you do that, now you can grab one of the side nodes here and here, if I point it this way, it might be easier. And you can drag it so it's like a parallelogram <laughs> and it looks like that part of the chair is like sticking up a little bit. So however high you want that to face, I think I think that angle looks pretty good. Okay. And then the last thing that we wanna do is add a little shadow cast by our chairs themselves. So we're gonna do that using the same method we did for everything else. Um, <laughs> we're gonna duplicate it. So swipe to the left and choose duplicate. We're gonna choose that bottom layer 
and we're going to fill it with kind of a creamy gray color, just like we did with the umbrella. Tap it and choose fill layer and set the blend mode to multiply. And then we're gonna go to the transform tool. Make sure you switch back to the uniform mode, not distort. And now we can offset our chair shadow. And we don't have to offset it quite as far because the chairs are not very far off the ground. The farther you make it, the shadow away from the object, the further away from the surface it will seem. So we only have to move those a little bit. So something like that. But we wanna make sure we're moving them at the same angle that we've been moving everything out. So I think that works. And here is our completed swimming pool scene. Of course, you could keep going and add additional details to this scene. Maybe some people swimming, some more umbrellas, beach towels, or maybe even Barbie's signature pink water slide. Thank you so much for drawing with me today. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot, and I help people find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. If you'd like to support me, you can check out my premium brush sets that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. And if you wanna take your learning to the next level, you should join Art Makers Club. Art Makers Club is a joy-filled creative community and learning hub for digital art makers. As a member, you'll get access to a growing library of in-depth courses, live virtual events and tutorials, free Procreate brushes, and more. In our community clubhouse, you get to connect with like-minded learning artists, share your work, ask for feedback, participate in discussions, and so much more. Come join us in the club. You can learn more at artmakersclub.com. If you're sharing your work to Instagram, I would love to see it. Use the hashtag Bardo Brush. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Thanks and have a great day.